in Australia, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we don't have time for a long little chat today because we've got a huge show today. It's packed with superstars. We will have here in a minute in the studio Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings. Uh, right now, lucky for us, the international tour has just been coming. Hot on the heels of the Johnny Cash and the Chris Christopher and Double Act. There's another couple of cowboys in town, they were in Sydney, arrived yesterday, Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings. Collectively, they've been singing songs of heartache and desire. They've been singing for more than 50 years. And now they're on the road again, and they're playing in Sydney starting tonight, and I'll be there, part of the national tour. So please welcome country music legend and partners in crime, Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you in Australia. Nice to be here. We now say that after having Chris Christopherson and Johnny Cash your cohort sitting in those two chairs the other day. We now say we had the awesome foursome of oh, country music. <laughs> well, let's do it. The awesome foursome. That's the nicest yeah. thing in one said by us some years. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the, the great normal hat? Well, we're going straight from here to the golf course. So, uh, way later than that. So, uh, I wore my golf clothes today. You're hooked on golf now, aren't you? Yeah. Is this something new or are you doing no, a long time? It's new for me. Uh, I was just explaining to Waylon that when you start out in the game, you're supposed to give your opponent strokes. So uh, you'll have to give me a stroke or two today. And uh, he thinks I'm a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a straight line. When, uh, when he sees me play. How long have you guys been doing Highwaymen stuff like that? How long have you been singing together? Oh, we've been singing together a long time, ever since I uh, would get Mamas in uh, Lickenbach. And that must have been, what, 15, 10, 15 years ago. You know. We've been friends for about 30 years, you know. 30 out of 35, I think, man. So are you going to guys to keep going and thinking, well, we got Johnny Cash cocks at first. Is that what you're thinking? Well, yeah, we want to be. <laughs> come over here and uh, check the water. Check, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they can put up with Chris and John, they can, they can handle us. Yeah, they can handle us. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. Now, what are you, apart from, from, from seeing, you made movies, and Honey Chuckle Rose was a lot of fun. Right? You must have enjoyed making that. Um, uh, Bob Rosser was uh, he played it. an old cowboy, he played a lot of, uh, indie, right? a lot of, a lot of good stuff there. Did you get tempted to do a lot of movies? Well, well, we were in a movie together, we were in a movie. We were in some movies, yeah. We did Stagecoach together, uh, we made the Stagecoach. I just did, uh, I do some television things. You, ever, I don't, you probably never heard of uh, Married with Children over here. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I'm on that. I just did that. That may be one of my most unfavorite things to do with movies. Yeah. You know, I, I a lot of sitting around. <laughs> You'd rather be out there with the guitar. And, yeah, well, it's kind of like getting caught in the act of trying to act. Mm -hmm. I'm going to quite get over that. Well, John Wayne School. Now, I just discovered something else that you two have in common. And I think you just discovered it too today. There's a little town in Texas called La Porte, Texas. I spent a lot of time. <laughs> Are you invested in the bank there? I did too. Uh, he did too. He's about it. He did too. Uh, Are you and, in the uh, Our money's still there. Yeah. Or somewhere. Or somewhere. It's scattered yeah. over South Texas. Where, where's the bank at? Jail. <laughs> <laughs> what was one of your top investments? What was what? What was one of your top investments? Well, it was uh, one of the normal ones, though. <laughs> Speaking of money, um, how about you and the um, <clears throat> Internal Revenue Department, or the IRS, I think you call over there, 15 million they hit you for? 32. <sighs> they sent me along to watch after their money. <laughs> it's just that fast, it's not that bad. 32. When that, when that, the, the, the million word comes very slowly, yeah. that's the bit that gets you. When that hits you like that, I mean, how do you get back up on your feet? Well, I got involved in this tax shelter thing that was uh, uh, something that the accountants devised and uh, turned out to be a disaster. And so all the time I was down, all these millions of dollars and the interest and penalties were accruing at the mm -hmm. same time and it was just building up over the years. So uh, uh, it was just a matter of us checking our books. Uh, you lost your house, you lost their books. They're, they're che they checked our books very carefully. It took a long time. And when they finally backed off, they said, okay, he couldn't possibly owe us $32 million. So uh, we, we came down to a more reasonable figure. 15. No, no, less than that. Oh, that's, that's, that's enough. A lot 
wasn't that long about, about you, Waylon, that uh, A, you, of course, you sang with the crickets. Buddy Holly was, was virtually your mentor, wasn't it? Yeah, he, uh, he was the first guy that ever had any faith in my singing. And, uh, and uh, I, uh, I played bass in, uh, in his group, you know, and uh, we were on the last tour together. Is it true that, um, as Madonna, the, the movie says, that, uh, that uh, you gave up your, uh, your seat on that plane for the big bopper? Yeah, he had, he had the flu real bad, and uh, he asked me, you know, if, it, uh, if he could take my place. And I said, yeah, you can, you can do it. It's okay with Buddy. It's okay with me. Buddy had charged the plane for me and him and a guy named Tommy Alter. And uh, I think that's where the flip in the coin came was Tommy and, and uh, Richie Valens. Those, uh, and there was a big confusion for a long time because there was a lot of clothes that belonged to Alsop and, and the rest of us on the plane. That sort of took you out of the business for a while, didn't yeah, it? Didn't yeah. you give up on the business? Well, you know, it just seemed like it took the best people out of the tour. And through that, I saw some of the, uh, the bad things that uh, I didn't want to see about people in the music business. And there was a, you know, like the night that that happened. They begged us and begged us to keep, you know, to come on over and play. We went over and finally and uh, played the show that night and uh, the people who were booking the show tried to dock us for Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and Big Papa. No, and uh, there's things like that. So I just kind of pulled back for a while. And then, uh, but it's something that you, you kind of, you live with for a long time. What you have to do is get over feeling guilty that you made it and they didn't. And then I, uh, the same, it's, it's kind of like that happened with the, with uh, Reba McIntyre, with her band. And so the only thing I could think of to tell her, well, I called her and I said, look, you got to remember one thing. If you could, you'd bring them back, wouldn't you? If you could, you'd bring them back alive. So that shows you how much she had to do with it. This sort of heartache is the sort of stuff you've written and sang about for a long time, isn't it? That sort of thing about, the, about life and the hurts of the heart. Heartache. Your own situation, you lost your son, must have really knocked you out a lot. Sure. Yeah. Did the music get you through in the end? Work. Yeah, that, that, the music is our work, so uh, uh, we worked our way right on through. Yeah. Although I don't know, are you still addicted to women? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, so when you and when you and Julio were doing your all the girls I've loved before, that was all true. Oh, yeah, absolutely, every word. <laughs> every word. <laughs> what did your wife say when you got out in the studio? Is it guess what I recorded today? Well, they all liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Four? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Four. Yeah, okay. Four wives. All right. No, I can ask you this. I've had three, so <laughs> I'm, I get away, I can get away with that sort of question. When you were starting out, you were writing, you wrote for Patchy Klein, you wrote for Roy Orbison. Um, did you, like Christopherson told us, in the early days, you are writing songs for other people when you know you can do them yourself. Is, is that frustrating? You know what it is? Yeah. Uh, I had just come from Texas when I first moved to Nashville, and I, had, I was working in clubs down there and doing fairly well in clubs like the way it was. And I ran into him in Phoenix. He was drawing big crowds in his club. And... We knew that what we were doing, or I knew what I was doing, was basically what the people liked. But once I got to Nashville and started talking to the, you know, so-called executives there, who were supposedly uh, in the know-how and knew more about it than I did, uh, I found out that they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> True. I found out. But you're very brave. Though. I mean, you had some big hits. You had, you had Georgia, and you had uh, those guys. But when you did start, I mean, I'm sure some of your friends even would say. William Nelson doing Stardust. And you had one of your biggest hits, biggest albums ever. Yeah, well, when I was playing those clubs in Texas, uh, when I was growing up, and spent many years in those clubs, and I would take requests every night with my band, and I, we'd have our little kitty there, and they'd pay us a couple of bucks or 50 cents or whatever to play their request. And they requested Stardust as much as they requested San Antonio Rose. Those people out there didn't have boundaries. They didn't say, well, this is country. Which the record comes from. Okay. Well, yeah, well, this was music. Yeah, and we played music up until we got into uh, the commercial end of it, and we found out that we were country and western, and we should be stuck over here, which is not a bad place to be, except that we'd like to do other songs. I could do Stardust. So Did you, but you've also done a lot of duets. I mean, Dolly Parton, Julio, I mentioned a lot of that. How do you feel with these days, like the Sinatra thing? He did the duets album, and they're never in the same room together. Yeah, well, I'm 
I want to do, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra and I are supposed to, I'm supposed to be on his next album when he comes out, but I want to go to the studio, I want us to go be there and do it. Because we've got, too, you know, we've got obviously a great relationship. You want to eyeball somebody, don't you? Don't you? Yeah. On, on the very given day of what the mood is, what you're feeling is? Yeah, I'd really rather cut the whole track there with all the musicians and everything. But rarely these days does that happen, especially when you're doing duets. Usually they'll cut the track and then they'll do the artists together. Uh, but I understand Frank did a lot of his by phone. By phone, yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you've been known to write songs by fax, haven't you? Uh, there was a story out that uh, Bob Dylan and I wrote a song by fax. Actually, what happened is that uh, uh, he wrote a melody and sent me the melody. Uh, he went in and cut the track on the melody and sent it to me. And I wrote the lyrics to it. And then we saw each other in New York and we went in and recorded it. He had never heard the lyric when he got to the studio, so I wasn't sure he was going to uh, like it. <laughs> but you, I mean, you worked with a lot of good people, and uh, I, mean, I love uh, Lick, Lick and Horseman. Have you ever seen Robert Redford, James Bond, Lick and Horseman? See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with this man here. That was a, must have been a fun film to make. He really was. I enjoyed that. Well, and when, that, when that horse comes charging out there and all the lights and everything going, it's, uh, it's a real buzz, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What we'll do, we're going to have you guys sing for us, I hope. Will you? Yeah. Will you? Well, what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll take a break and then remember that one of my favourite songs by these guys, and Mama Daddy and Baby grew up to be cowboys, and after the break we'll have uh, Willie and Waylon and they'll uh, sing it for us live. Thanks, gentlemen.